What are your thoughts on porn and masturbation as they relate to hormones? I mean, this is a big debate on the internet. In fact, one of the most uh, common debates is whether or not masturbation increases or decreases testosterone in males. Certainly, it will decrease motivation to go find sexual partners. We know this, yes. um, and there are more and more data on this all the time. In terms of the effects of pornography and masturbation, and here I suppose we need to be um, somewhat specific and operationally define what we're talking about. We're talking about porn and masturbation to the point of ejaculation, mm -hmm. right? Um, because my understanding is that the ejaculation and, and orgasm associated with it causes an increase in prolactin, which blunts libido for some period of time. The duration of that will vary from person to person and circumstance to circumstance. But basically all of this points to the fact that porn and masturbation can really limit libido in the real world. Prior to allowing the professional to proceed, we want to briefly mention in a few seconds that the pornography has been a source of debate and controversy for centuries, with no clear consensus on its impact on human behavior and life. While some argue that pornography is harmless and can enhance sexual pleasure, others believe that it can have negative consequences on individuals and society as a whole. Given the complexity of the issues surrounding pornography, it's important that we have open and honest discussions about its impact on human behavior and life. While it's clear that pornography is not going away anytime soon, we can work to mitigate its negative effects and promote healthy attitudes towards sex and relationships. This may involve education, regulation, or other approaches but it's essential that we take action to address this important issue. Now, let's continue. And to me, uh, pornography and the screen is not the real world. Though screens exist in the real world, the real world doesn't exist in the screen. That's an accurate statement. And prolactin does have a significant acute increase after uh, ejaculation. It does to some degree after orgasm as well, but prolactin acts on the pituitary to inhibit the release of the hormones LH and FSH, of which LH can increase testosterone. So this may be one of the cases where the dose makes the poison, and if it is a very frequent habit, certainly uh, daily or more than once a day would be very detrimental from a hormonal component, not even taking into account the, the neural wiring. Listen, I think it's terrific that you've actually defined frequency because this is the problem on the internet or even in the doctor's office, you'll see um, descriptions about pornography being dangerous for certain things or, or detrimental to hormones. People say frequent, but what's frequent? So you're saying daily or multiple times per day would be potentially detrimental to the hormone profile of a male of essentially any age. And that's just for masturbation. Um, with pornography, uh, with porn use as well, it would likely be worse. Why, why is that? Just this, this, the sort of dopaminergic drive of the stimulus, just the really intense visual stimulus? Dopamine sensitivity. Um, I think that uh, using the analogy of a dopamine wave pool, it would deepen the pool, but not increase your supply of dopamine. Maybe you could describe the dopamine wave pool, because I think it's such a powerful way of thinking about dopamine and what dopamine does. In fact, I've... Um, always credited you in when I've done it, but I've, I've generally uh, stolen your analogy of the dopamine wave pool because it, it's so astute. The dopamine wave pool describes the natural variation of ups and downs in your dopamine or your motivation. And uh, in the wave pool, depending on how high the peak is, you often have a deeper trough. So you do not want too high of a peak. In addition, if your peak is very, very high, for example, uh, when you're using uh, many substances like uh, cocaine or like amphetamines, your dopamine can go so high, you lose almost all the water from the wave pool. And then when you crash from that, not only is the trough low, you have less dopamine in the pool to begin with. The dopamine receptor is extremely sensitive, as is the GABA receptor, which is an inhibitory receptor, whereas dopamine is technically a stimulant more related to adrenaline or noradrenaline. The depth of the pool can change very quick. So you wanna have that happy medium where you're fairly near the top, but you're not so near the top that the depth of the pool is gonna go down. So if I interpret uh, that in the context of this discussion about um, 
libido, sex, porn, and masturbation, it, if somebody has a very intense sexual experience, and not, not here we're not necessarily talking about an intense um, orgasm, we're talking about just an in, you know, a lot of intense visual, so very um, a lot of intense imagery or auditory input or both, that is going to lead to a situation where dopamine is going to be depleted afterwards. Correct. A, a guest on this podcast uh, before, my colleague at Stanford, Dr. Anna Lemke, who's an expert in addiction, talked a bit about this, the sort of seesawing. Uh, here we're talking about a wave and a crashing out of the water from the wave pool there. It was a seesawing from pleasure and pain. There's going to be a longer and deeper period of lack of pleasure following that. And I think a lot of people think, oh, well, that's great. You know, they want the intense experience. But if that intense experience is coming from pornography and masturbation, or I suppose coming from, you know, high adrenaline activities like, you know, life, uh, life risking parkour hanging off the side of a building, it inevitably is going to lead to depressive episodes, low libido episodes that follow. Is that right? Correct. In a similar physiologic way uh, to withdrawal from stimulants like amphetamines. Now is sex with a partner different? Because there are many people who are chasing more and more intense experiences with a partner as opposed to through pornography and masturbation. Again, here we're talking about all ages and I should always say anytime we're talking about sex with a partner, we're talking, I, you know, the, the four conditions that I always um, lay out on the uh, Huberman Lab podcast are that we're talking about consensual, age appropriate, context appropriate, species appropriate interactions. Yeah. And uh, this is also a case where the dose makes the poison. So if there's, um, you know, obviously meeting all those criteria. If they have one preference um, that for both of them is a positive experience, then that is likely okay. Um, you're not gonna be able to maintain dopamine over a certain threshold for a long period of time. So there very well may be a crash from the experience as well. And the crash may be different in one partner than the other. Mm, interesting. Oh, I'll draw an analogy to food. It'd be like, you know, you don't have to serve the banquet meal seven, seven nights of the week, maybe just two. Is that right? And there are other delicious foods out there. Can I, yes. Can we use that analogy? That is very reasonable. Okay. Not trying to be PG-13, just trying to, uh, uh, um, parsimony, Occam's razor, the ability to describe a lot of things in, in, a, in a few words. I'd like to return to the key things that people should do, or I should say the key things that men should do to optimize their hormones. So we talked about getting some movement, getting some sunlight, getting quality social connection one way or the other, avoid excessively frequent masturbation and viewing pornography. And for some people, zero might be the optimal number. And I keep for coming most, back to for this. For most people. For most people. Interesting. Uh, I feel so fortunate to have grown up prior to the availability of internet pornography. I've never been a big consumer of pornography. I've just not been my thing. But I hear so often from males of all ages about their addiction to it, their affliction by it. It's really a serious issue. And that's one of the reasons why I'm grateful that you're willing to talk about this and your clinical experience with these patients. 